Okay, the, the accumulation of weapons, though in, indispensable, is a great ten, temptation to use them. Therefore, watch the military advisors. They will itch to pull the trigger. Russia is certainly on the warpath, and it is only fear of those who are in the know that holds her back. Your country is already at war with Russia, like the Droll de Guerre, 1939 to 40. There is no reason and no diplomacy that will effectively deal with Russia because there is an elementary drive in her, as was the case with Hitler. I see the main trouble not in Russia, but in Europe, which has become a vital extension of the USA. Uh, the great question is whether the historically differentiated nations of Europe can be sufficiently welded together to form a unified bloc. Apart from military defensive measures, the organization of Europe forms the foremost and most difficult task of American policy. Uh, I think we could probably all agree that that's still a difficult task today and <laughs> getting worse. Um, <clears throat> I should like to call your attention to my little book, Essays on Contemporary Events, uh, where you will find some further contributions to the great problem of our time. It seems to me that at the bottom of all these problems lies the development of science and technology, which has destroyed man's meta metaphysical foundation. Social welfare has replaced the kingdom of God. Um, okay, so Jung was a conservative. Okay, he was married to the third wealthiest woman in Switzerland. <laughs> His father-in-law was an industrialist. And um, so he was anathema about social welfare systems because he says there's, there's no free lunch. Okay, if you, and we, we all know this, of course. Uh, but also, um, you, you'll hear how he's talking about the balance uh, and, and what we see in our society now, in our economy, is we've got 20 families who control half of the wealth of the world. Okay, so that's out of balance too. And so we're not talking about social welfare here, we're talking about some common decency and fairness, I think. Um, so. And also, he's talking about how science and, um, you know, the atheists would say, you know, there is no God. And, he, you know, and I admit I was struggling with this stuff, too, because I'm saying, okay, we can see back to the Big Bang, we can see down to quarks, where's God? Okay. But that's not the question. But it's, but it's still the question that's being asked, because I don't know if you've seen this uh, television program uh, that Morgan Freeman is in called Through the Wormhole. Have you seen that on, on television? It's on, I think it's on the Science Channel. But, you know, in that program, they're, they're still looking for God in the physical world. And, and uh, you know, I think that, to me, Jung's ins insight made a lot of sense finally it was my aha moment when he when he said every religious statement regardless of what religion is a statement of the is a psychic fact not a physical fact and if you accept that and accept that there is psyche then it, it could all live together and then every religion can be correct because there's psychic facts for everyone um, well, that's right, and but I mean, these are the these are the alterations. Why can't they do that? Why can't they accept it as psychic? Why do they have to see a material something? They never see a material something when they go to church, do they? But it's, it also fits in with this sort of literal interpretation. And God, I'm so surprised that all the interpretations they have, whether you're Catholic or you're you're a Baptist from this church or that church or a Methodist. Or, they all have this God they talk about. But for example, we had a friend who, who referred to she was Catholic. She said, "Well, they're all they're all good. They're all good Christians, but we're just better." You know, it's 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 just 
it's like that. Some paths yeah, there you go. are truer. That's it. Some paths are truer. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, so it, everything's acceptable, but some paths are actually true. But they can't they see beyond their own dogmas and doctrines. Right. And and but that's what we have to do as a species. In the end, that's what we have to do. That's not really a religion per se. That's another materialist philosophy. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you can say Protestantism is a a materialist philosophy because they got rid of all the images. Yeah, this is, you know, call it a religion. Whitewash everything and get rid of all the images. Right. To me, it's more like an opinion. Yeah. (laughs) Which is what what Islam did, too, of course. I mean, you're not allowed to make not only are you not allowed to make a picture of God of Allah you're not allowed to make a picture of the prophet peace be upon him and so you know the only thing that you can do is write the name of God in 300 different ways <laughs> do they have any kind of iconography at all or? no no, no. You know, when I was a kid, I wanted to go to the Catholic Church because they had all that iconography, and I was an art guy. Right. <laughs> and, uh, this right. is great stuff. Well, why is there a church? Why did my parents' church have nothing on the walls? You know? Yeah, well, I, I, re- I remember <laughs> when, when my family came back from Kodiak, and I was ten years old. My parents wanted to decide what church they were going to go to, and this is in in Central Michigan in a town called Pawpaw. And I remember the Popo patch. Well, that's the town. And, and so, anyway, um, they decided to try out various churches. And so, one week, my father, without noticing what the sign was in front of the church, uh, and he had been Methodist, and my mother was Lutheran, and then there was Missouri Synod Lutheran, too. And my father hadn't noticed what church this was, so he let my mother and, and uh, we kids out and he said he parked the car and he never came in but um, we walk in and we go wow this is really cool <laughs> turned out it was the Catholic yeah, Church yeah. <laughs> all these great yeah. images <laughs> yeah. That was really good. Yeah. when my brother comes to visit me once a year to help me with things he has a very terrible look on his face. And I kept trying to figure out why. Eventually he said, now he's an evangelical, some kind of born again Christian. I don't ask, I don't want to know. Yeah. He thinks I should throw out, get rid of all of my historic temple Buddhas. Oh, yeah. Because they're, well, against God. Yeah. You know, some people will never because they don't want to. Yeah. I don't know why. I honestly don't. I don't it know. makes well, them feel better because they think they're right. Mm-hmm. They See, certainly think they're he's right. right yeah. And I'm wrong because I have well, these are issues that Dr. Jung got into in great depth, okay? but we're certainly far from that at this point. Um, well, I've only got so much energy to devote to it anyway. So. Yeah, but maybe a year from now I'll start talking about psychology and religion, but I, I don't really want to get into it except in general terms. But, but the point that he was making, though, about... We've broken the the metaphysical foundation that, um, you know, there was a foundation that was based on religion and people went and did things because God, some metaphysical thing, urged them to do it. And now we don't have it. The only thing we have is the almighty dollar and materialism and so on. And, and, uh, he believed uh, that, you know, the churches had really missed the boat in terms of trying to put a metaphysical foundation under um, what modern life has become because we need that and, and it's a part of our psyche in some way. I mean, you know, I, I don't go to church. He didn't go to church after he was 11, as a matter of fact, but... Um, and his father was a minister, <laughs> uh, but, um, but 
there's so much resistance to that, and it's, it's really, like you said, it's, it's healthy, but just the science establishment itself would try to shut that down. I mean, it's just, it's so... Well, I mean, they, they are always trying to shut it down, and, and that's what, what this through the wormhole thing is, you know, even in, the, in this current season where they're they're doing experiments to see if they can find God, but they're you know, but then they keep coming back and saying the answer is negative, right? And it's because they're using the rules of logic, not the rules well, of magic, right? Well, they're they're using the rules of the physis, not the psyche. Mm -hmm. Okay, in the physical world. They're they're talking about the physical world and metaphysics is in the psychic world, in the psychological world. The other thing it would be interesting to look at, and I haven't done it myself, would be <clears throat> just introvert, extrovert. Because, you know, some people have to join these mega churches and become part of this whole, you know, po population organism. Right. And, and other people find that very distracting well, from, a, from a metaphysical point of view. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I mean, mega, those mega churches, I went to one in Singapore one time that was unbelievable. And after I read Canetti's uh, Crowds and Power, then I understood it because, you know, they, all they do is use the, use the rules of the herd. And, you know, they get you waving your arms back and forth and everybody's waving their arms back and forth. And, and, uh, and so pretty soon you, you just get into this hypnosis and, you know, I I was get, I felt myself getting sucked into this thing. I said, "Holy cow! I can't believe this." You know, is that an archetype? The herd? Is, that, is there a specific archetype? Well, there's yeah. I mean, it, it's I don't know if it's an archetype per se, or it's you know, Jung's statement was, um, you know, bring me a, a, a room full of a hundred intelligent men and I, I'll just show you one um, you know fathead <laughs> is, is basically what he said I think uh, because because whenever human beings gather together we tend to start going along with one another and if we don't agree it's we we make some sort of an adjustment even if it's an unconscious adjustment and so uh, you know, we don't want to rock the boat. Uh, for, for example, just in this small group here, uh, everybody's accepted the fact that I'm sitting here and everybody's sitting in front of me. Okay, well, this is a reading group, so, you know, maybe we should be in a circle where everything is equal. We've discussed that. Pardon? We've discussed that. We did, actually. <laughs> I, you know, I'm happy to change it, and I'm happy to... And we should discuss it in the group, but but and and so I'm for that, okay, and and but then I want people to take on some responsibility for also making presentation. I don't think I have a, a monopoly on wisdom. What did he call it? He called it. Uh, medieval psychology. Yes. Is yeah. Astrology. Yeah. I actually, by synchronicity, I happen to have a, <laughs> a letter. Should I read it to you? Sure. Yeah. Um, anyway, it's uh, to L. Oswald. It was written December 8th, 1928. Dear colleague, please do not consider it a presumption on your part to interrogate me. On the contrary, I am glad to be you found my lecture interesting. I have experienced nothing of the kind in Switzerland yet. <laughs> you are quite right in supposing that I reckon astrology among those movements which, like theosophy, etc., seek to assuage an irrational thirst for knowledge, but actually lead it into a sidetrack. Astrology is knocking at the gates of our universities at Trivigan, uh, a tri Trivigan professor uh, has switched over to astrology and of course 
on astrology was given at Cardiff University last year. Astrology is not mere superstition, but contains some psychological facts, like theosophy, which are of considerable importance. Astrology uh, has actually nothing to do with the stars, but is the 5,000-year-old psychology of antiquity and the Middle Ages. Unfortunately, I cannot explain or prove this to you in a letter. Uh, you are also quite right in your view that people who subscribe all out uh, to any of these movements exclude authentic experience for the sake of believed hypotheses, not knowing that uh, they are mere hypotheses, but believing them to be knowledge. Uh, but in all these dubious fields, there is at least something that is worth knowing and that our present day rationalism has cast aside rather too hastily. Uh, this something is projected psychology. So this something is projected psychology, which is projection is one of the fundamental ideas of Jungian thought. And, and so it's like Tarot, um, you know, which Tarot is also based on synchronicity and projection. And, um, and it works um, because I believe that everybody is affected by a Tarot reading, mm -hmm. right? Uh, it's not just one person, and so you could do a reading for the class and just mm -hmm. see what happens. I guess I'm going to leave the rest of this aside. I mean, but one of the big things he says is it, it's much better to know, therefore, that life on this earth is balanced between an equal amount of pleasure and misery, even when it is at its best, and that real progress is only the psychological ad adaptation to the various forms of individual misery. Misery is relative. When many people possess two cars, the man with only one car is a proletarian deprived of the goods of this world and therefore entitled to overthrow the social order. Germany was not in possession of world supremacy, therefore she was a have-not. We all think in terms of social welfare, this is a, the big mistake because the more you economize on the vulgar forms of misery, the more you are ensnared by new, unexpected, complicated, intricate, incomprehensible variants of, unha un of unhappiness such as you have never dreamt of before. Think of the almost uncanny increase of divorces and neuroses, for example. And uh, I must say, I prefer a modest poverty to any tangible discomfort. For instance, no bathroom, no electricity, no car, etc., to those pests. The bit of social progress attained by Nazi Germany and Russia is compensated for by police terror, a new and very considerable item on the list of miseries, but an, an inevitable consequence of social welfare. Why not spiritual welfare? There is no government on earth bothering about it. Yet spiritual adjustment is the problem. Um, yesterday, my wife insists that we go to Fresh Foods, which we never do, to buy ginger oil to put on my knee. Uh, and, and I said, uh, okay. And so she gets it. And as we're walking out, she says, well, this is Outlander medicine. But it's, it's women's medicine that had, had come up through centuries, and, and it works. I mean, it makes my knee feel better. And um, so I'm not, I'm not arguing, you, you know, and, and astrology and things like that don't continue on if they aren't useful to people, right? They, they get drops if, if they're not helping. <clears throat> Unless it's a snake oil spill. <laughs> right. Um, I, but that, actually, that wasn't the letter I wanted to read. I'll be happy to give this to you uh, if you want, or, or to you, either one. But I, I just brought this to read because uh, there's another letter here, um, which just as an example, and I'll let you go after this, um, uh, Dr. Jung being a curmudgeon, 
and he was constantly under attack through his lifetime. Um, every time he wrote something, somebody was angry with him until everybody was angry with him. You know, he just hung out in Bollingen and said, well, I, I just have to write what I think and, you know, let everybody work it out after I'm gone, you know. <laughs> it's not my problem after that. Uh, <clears throat> but he, here he's writing to somebody who's somehow criticized him, and he says, Dear Dr. Gilbert, this is in January 1929, please be kind to your fellow beings. Don't think that they are all damned fools, even if they are, even if they say excitingly foolish things, even if they are the most inconsistent idiots. Allow for one grain of wisdom in all their foolishness. Can't you conceive of a physicist that thinks and speaks of atoms, yet is convinced that those are merely his own abstractions? That would be my case. I have not the faintest idea what the psyche is in itself, yet when I come to think and speak of it, I must speak of my abstractions, concepts, views, figures, uh, knowing that they are not specific illusions. That is what I call non-concretization. Non and know that I am by no means the first and only man who speaks of anima, etc. Science is the art of creating suitable illusions which the fool believes or argues against, but the wise man enjoys their beauty or their ingenuity without being blind to the fact that they are human veils and curtains concealing the abysmal darkness of the unknowable. Don't, don't you see that it is life too, life too to paint the world with divine colors? You never will know more than you can know, and if you proudly refuse to go by the available knowledge, or whatever you like to call it, you are bound to produce a better theory or truth, and if you should not succeed in doing so, you are left on the bank high and dry, and life runs away from you. You deny the living and creative God and man, and you will be, the, be like the wandering Jew. All things are as, are as if they were. Real things are effects of something unknown. The same is true of anima, ego, etc. And moreover, there are no real things that are not relatively real. We, are, we have no idea of absolute reality because reality is always something observed and so on. I am sure all this stuff gets your goat and that's not the point. The point is that if you create a better theory, then I shall cock my ears. Cordially yours, C.G. <laughs> brilliant. Yeah, it is brilliant in a way.